Hello, everyone. This is Tim Harris with Harris Real Estate University, and welcome to yet another Harris Real Estate University Superstar interview. Uh, today's superstar is somebody who is a personal coaching client of mine and somebody who maybe doesn't fit the traditional mold of the Harris Real Estate University Superstar, and you're about to discover why. He's got a lot of interesting, uh, interesting tips and suggestions on how to build your business and really, frankly, a lot of motivational secrets that hopefully you're all prepared uh, to consume ravenously. So take notes, pay attention, and stay focused. Now, remember, if you want to uh, listen to any of the past Harris Real Estate University Superstar interviews, you can do so simply by going to realestateinsidernews.com and clicking on the Superstar Interviews t uh, tab that's at the top of the blog. So today's interview, uh, interview is going to last probably about a half hour to 45 minutes. It's going to go relatively quick. Um, so really stay focused. Uh, so without any further delay, Michael, welcome to the call. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Tim. Um, so, Michael, uh, let them know who you are, where you sell real estate, how they can be in, uh, get in contact you, uh, with you. And remember, this interview will, over time, be listened to by thousands of different agents out there. So this is a great opportunity for you to potentially get referrals from a lot of different sources. So make sure you give them all your best contact information. Yes, definitely. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Michael Zasovsky. I sell in New Jersey, uh, and I do business in several counties uh, as long as it's within one hour drive from where I live. Uh, but most of my clients come from Bergen, Middlesex, Somerset, and Union counties. Uh, the best way to reach me is through my email, which is njshortsale at yahoo.com, and my direct number is 908 220 Nine three eight five. That's uh, that's how you can reach me uh, right now. Okay, perfect. So, um, how long have you sold real estate in New Jersey in that area? Uh, well, I've been real estate full time since uh, two thousand and four, um, and it was always my main source of income. Um, I never uh, been in real estate, in real estate part time. It was always full time um, job for me. Okay, so obviously you have an accent. Are you from what, Tennessee, Kentucky? Where is that accent from? Well, actually, I am from Poland. I am from Europe. That's why. <laughs> I know. That was, my, that was a poor attempt at a joke. So how long have you been in the United States? Well, I've been living uh, in the United States uh, for over 10 years. So when you came to the United States, Michael, did you know how to speak English? Well, actually, uh, yes, I knew how to speak English, but uh, my heavy accent uh, was you know, kind of not helping me too much, um, so I have to overcome this uh, by working harder and harder. Um, so, uh, you know, being in the United States for over 10 years, selling real estate uh, for almost, you know, eight years, you know, um, I don't enjoy being here, and uh, I think, you know, I have much more potential uh, by living and working in the United States uh, than in Europe right now. Well, so everyone that's listening, what I want you to take away from this is here is somebody who's been in the United States for about a decade, been selling real estate for about eight years. Um, he, you know, even though I think he's perfectly understandable, he does have an accent, and that might be a challenge in, in his market. But I want all of you to be really connecting with the fact that he just really pointed out something – uh, that he knows he has to do. He knows he has an accent. He knows he has to overcome that. And so he says he works harder. And he really does. And that's really the inspirational aspect of today's uh, superstar is that he has very high goals, very tough to accomplish goals. And you know the fact is is that all of you could have eat the same the same uh, goals for yourself, the same objectives from your real estate business and your personal life. And you know, Michael's going to share with you some specific things that he does every single day that you can do as well uh, to accomplish the same level of success that he has. So, Michael, let's just dig in here. Now, you, you mentioned that you uh, obviously have been in the United States for about a decade. What did you do in Poland before you uh, moved to the United States? What did you do for a living? Well, actually, um, I was a student. Uh, my major was, uh, you know, the American Studies so uh, just after getting my master's degree completed in American studies, uh, I, I came uh, to United States. I decided to, uh, so, to live in States. Yep. Was it, was it always your goal when you were in Europe to move to the United States? It sounds like with your studies it may have been. Yes, yes. That was my goal because, you know, I was born in Poland, uh, which was a former uh, Soviet Union satellite. And uh, I always wanted to travel, but we were not allowed to travel at all. 
So uh, I decided that at a certain point of time in my life, I'm going to leave to uh, to a different uh, country where I can achieve my goals. And, uh, uh, you know, living uh, in the United States, it was always my priority. So I decided to learn more about the country. Uh, I got my master's degree completed, accomplished, and uh, – uh, same same year I, I came to the United States. You know, it's interesting. A lot of folks that haven't traveled to Europe or haven't had the ability to you know to travel to different you know obviously even places outside of Europe, they don't un- Americans they don't understand the fact that uh, the United States still is truly a beacon of opportunity for everyone in the world. Um, they don't understand how much the rest of the world uh, and a lot of uh, people that are motivated like you really want to come to the United States. They take that for granted. From from someone who's been here for a decade and has a different perspective than most Americans, uh, can you relate to what I'm saying? I mean, your your perspective on opportunity, being that you come from a former communist country, must be completely different than what you maybe feel and see coming from your fellow Americans. Yes, definitely I agree with that because, you know, in my country, you know, over 10 years ago, unemployment was over 35%. In some uh, area of my country was, you know, like 50% uh, versus United States right now it's around, you know, 10%. So it's not that bad even though, you know, uh, it's called the the biggest depression, you know, uh, right now. So uh, I was kind of, uh, you know, accustomed to – you know, living in uh, hard, tougher, much tougher conditions, you know, people being unemployed, it was hard to uh, to make money, it was hard to find a job. Um, so uh, I decided to uh, to leave to, uh, to America and uh, look for a much better life for me and uh, my future family. Well, so that's what you just said, something interesting. You are accustomed to having to work hard. You are accustomed to having – you grew up in a market, in a world, in a country that was uh, – in. in had a high unemployment rate where people just had to work harder just to get by and taking that work ethic to the United States almost gives you an unfair advantage over most of your competitors, doesn't it? Yes, 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 it does. I definitely agree with that. Yep, that's true. So when you – without worrying about offending anybody, Michael, when you run into Americans that are complaining and bellyaching and saying how, oh, my gosh, it's so hard to you know get ahead in the United States, what do you think when you hear Americans complaining like that? Well, I think that, you know, um, like imagine, uh, you know, living in the United States, going to Europe, learning a new language, whether that's Polish, German, German or French, you know, and start selling real estate. That's what really happened to me. I had to, you know. <laughs> so that's, you know, just looking for, from a different perspective. You know, I, I would take these people back to Europe, to other countries around the world, so they can see, you know, different, you know, life conditions. And, uh, you know, I think that, um, you know, in America, still, this is the the best country to live and work and uh, you know achieve your goals. You know, most of my goals I, I couldn't really achieve, whether it's Poland, France, or because at the end, you know, Poland we joined the European Union, but still, it's much harder in Europe uh, to find work and to be successful and to uh, achieve your goals than in Europe. You know, even though we can actually work in Europe, uh, I would still would decide to go to America. You know, much bigger opportunities, you know, for people willing to work hard and, and smart, you know, because, you know, um, you have to work hard and smart, and uh, this is the only way to to become successful, in my humble opinion. Well, and it's a good opinion to have. So uh, you mentioned hard, working hard and smart. I understand what working hard means, but what do you mean by working smart? Well, I think that uh, by working smart, um, I think that you really need to be uh, – you know, learning new skills, investing in your own business, learning from the best, okay? Um, that's, that's what I mean by, by working uh, smart. It's not only working hard and doing, you know, same things, you know, all the time, but also trying new things and new ways uh, to do business. And, um, you know, really if you, if you want to lear- learn, I think you should learn from the best in your, in your um, field, whether it's real estate or any other business. You know, that's what I meant by, meant by that. 
and you know that's actually kind of a European education model, isn't it? I mean, mentoring or what we call here in the United States coaching, that's kind of the way that the European education system has worked for a long time. A lot of people will go right from you know essentially elementary school and then high school, and they'll right, go right into a trade where they'll learn from a senior apprentice. So that kind of uh, yep. coaching model in Europe is, is yeah, it's the same as it works. I mean, really, maybe that's what we should be doing educationally in the United States as well. So let's get to the nuts and bolts of it. Um, Okay. You know, I, I wrote down this question for you, and, and I and I think it actually I think it will be interesting for a lot of the listeners to hear your your answer, because you are such a disciplined person. But what is your definition of a perfect day? Well, actually, I have a schedule for my perfect day, and I try to stick to my schedule as much as I can every single day. Um, so around 7 p.m., I, I wake up and I prepare for for my day. Okay. Um, around 7.30, you know, I try to read a little bit every day, so from 7.30 to 8.30, uh, usually I read books, okay. Um, from 8.30 to 9, um, I check my emails and um, different type of tasks from the banks. Um, between uh, 9 and 10 a.m., I call all my short sell leads, I call my past client centers of influence, so this is like one hour of follow-up with uh, all my, you know, potential leads. Uh, and uh, the goal is to make an appointment and uh, list a property. Um, and, every day, uh, run right? Every day, that's correct, every day. My, yeah, that's, that's right. my main right. goal. Uh, that's my mindset for the day. To make enough phone calls to schedule an appointment and, uh, you know, be in front of uh, somebody who wants to buy or sell real estate. Um, 10 a.m., um, you know, it's like 10, 15 minutes break uh, around uh, 11, 10 to 12, 15. I follow up on my short sell files with all these banks, okay? I need to stay on the top of that in order to be able to close these files. Uh, then I'm having a lunch around 12, 15. Um, 1 p.m., you know, one hour, I usually try to spend... Uh, at least one hour for education. So I review past coaching calls, check my homework, you know, um, from last uh, coaching call, uh, practice scripts, you know, uh, that I do this kind of work. Um, I would say from 2 p.m., um, again, <clears throat> I'm trying to uh, make appointments, calling buyers, sellers. Uh, if I have no appointments for that particular day, I, I continue to prospect and do lead follow-up, you know, or negotiate offers, you know, prepare CMAs, et cetera. Okay, so th that's between Well, and also, and, uh, Michael, if you, if, you don't, if you don't have an appointment, too, you're not giving yourself enough credit here, you'll actually go door knock. I mean, you're not – your focus, your goal is to set an appointment a day. And, you know, it doesn't happen every day, but you certainly don't leave anything on the table. You're giving it all you can to accomplish that, that, that daily minimum standard, aren't that's, you? Yes, that's correct, uh, but actually door knocking uh, is between 4 and 7 p.m. So uh, just after, uh, you know, this uh, lead follow-up, you know, between 3 and 4, uh, I do a little bit of mail-outs. Uh, I submit uh, short sale files to lenders, follow up with my clients, and uh, like you had mentioned before, I go door knocking between 4 and 7 p.m. You know, um, if that, you know, I live in New Jersey, so sometimes it's hard to go door knocking if it's cold or you know, raining. So if I can do door knocking, uh, I try to call uh, another 25 uh, prospects and, uh, you know, and make an appointment or a listing presentation scheduled. So that is a level of discipline that obviously I'd like to prescribe to every Harrisville State University coaching student, even those of you who are yet to become a Harrisville State University coaching student. If you just took the morning portion of Michael's schedule and applied that to your own business, just think what a difference that would make. And literally, guys, what you're doing is you're taking the things that, frankly, mean the most to your business, the things that are going to put money in your pocket, put you in a position to help people. Um, those are the things you do first every single day. And the other things that are maybe of lesser value or going to uh, generate business down the road, those come secondary. All too often, realtors wake up and what happens? The voicemail, the email, and then you're essentially like uh, you're just going wherever the strongest breeze is. Uh, Michael is disciplined. He checks his phone, uh, his emails at a specific time. He checks his voicemails at a specific time. He uh, batches his work. And, and guys, just to put this in perspective, Michael, how many pendings do you have right now? 
Okay, I have right now uh, 17 uh, short sale properties under contract, um, and yeah, that's that's what I have right now. And uh, okay, I am negotiating an, an, yes, yeah, 17 under contract. I'm negotiating uh, another two, so probably by the end of this week, I'm gonna have total of 19 and uh, under contract and a 19 listings. So, you know, that's that's my sh short sale inventory right now. Active. Okay. <laughs> Right, so 19 active when those close, those are worth who knows how much. I mean, what 100? We should you add it up for our next coaching call, obviously. But you know, it's over a hundred thousand dollars. And and guys, here, here's a thought for you. Um, you know, Michael, I, I didn't write questions down for you pertaining to money stuff, so I'm not going to ask uh, those questions. You know, in preparation for our calls, guys, I always uh, have a script ahead of time for these interviews, so folks, our students can uh, prepare, obviously. But Michael is well on his way to becoming a millionaire. And, and an honest to God, money in the bank, cash in hand, millionaire. Now that's something that used to be the goal of a lot of Americans, especially small business owners, which all of you realtors certainly are, your small business owners, to accumulate enough wealth to be financially independent. Well, you're listening to somebody who's actually well on his way to doing it and will probably within the next 24 months have accomplished that goal. Now, what has he done that you can do that you can apply to your business what is he doing that you know that's what you should be listening to and paying attention to and I, I'll tell you what I heard was he has discipline he has focus he has a specific schedule that he sticks to guys and all of our superstar interviews the one thing you're gonna hear that's consistent uh, and any top producer you ever talk to and by the way this is any business you ever if you ever read a success book from you know any uh, business leader or any political leader, it just doesn't even matter. They have minimum standards for themselves. Like, well, here's another one. Michael, do you exercise every day? Well, I exercise at least five times on a weekly basis. You know, I really need to um, break away from real estate, you know, all phone calls, negotiations. So I need uh, at least one break, one short break during the day. So I exercise at least one hour, you know, uh, five times uh, per week or longer if possible. How how long did it take for you? I know that we're reading a book right now about uh, forming habits, right? So how yep. long did it take for you to actually form the habits that you have now, the schedule, the daily standards? And how long did it take for you to actually make that your own and to adopt it as your own and to live and breathe it and to have that be part of your everyday function, having a rigid schedule like that? How long did it take you? Well, to create new habits, I take at least, you know, I would say a couple of months you know, um, to create new habits. So uh, from, uh, you know, real estate perspective, you know, um, being uh, being uh, on the top of your schedule, you know, uh, working and doing the same things, you know, every day, you know, it takes time for this habit to be created. So uh, just to answer your question, you know, it takes a couple of months at least, you know. That's what I think. You know, you know, Michael, one of the uh, the things I like best about coaching you personally is the fact that you come to our coaching call every single week and you have almost always specific questions, things that came up during your you know previous week's uh, work. You might have an objection that happened or you might have an experience and then you and I can model it out. And we, you know, I give you the scripts and the objection handlers and whatnot. But what is really great about Michael is he applies them immediately and he doesn't change them. So he'll come to the coaching calls, guys, and again, one of the other key characteristics we see of any top-producing realtor, and Michael said it as well, listen to any of our other interviews, is they apply what they learn immediately. They don't just put it down on a piece of paper, put it in their notes in their computer and forget about it. They apply it immediately. It's all too often you guys will ask for a script or how to figure out some problem or whatnot, and then you don't write the notes down. You don't apply what you learn. You try to model it to your you know, that isn't, those aren't my words and all that. That's fine. You guys can eventually, as you become more successful, change the scripts ever so slightly so they fit your personality, so they fit maybe your local you know, parlance. But for the most part, you need to stick to the way the scripts are written because they've been proven over the years to work. Um, so you, when there's objection handling, I mean, Michael Prospects, guys, he picks up the phone, something that Americans still struggle with to this day. I mean, Michael, you'll call an expired listing that who, you called your centers of influence and past clients. When you're calling folks, and, and you know, obviously you have an accent, though, again, I don't think it's a problem. Personally, I can understand you perfectly, and I'm sure so can all of our listeners. It, how did you overcome the fear that people wouldn't be able to understand you? I mean, that had to be something else that, 
mentally you had to work your way through. How did you do it? Well, actually, it's not easy, you know. Um, but, you know, if it was easy, everybody would be independent, financially independent, and uh, they could be actually doing, you know, everything that they want to do in their lives. Uh, so, basically, most of people, they will not do business with me, but my job is to find people who will, okay? So, that's, that's how I feel it. That's how uh, how I work. So, uh, you know, I, I have to call a lot of people. I have to do a lot of door knocking, you know, uh, in order to get, you know, people to work with me. Most of people, they will not, okay, but I have to find the people who will, okay? And me, by uh, using scripts, you know, by um, telling them and showing them how great job I could do for them, you know, I'm able to convince them. I'm much better in front of somebody than, you know, on the phone, but I use the phone as a tool, you know. So uh, it helps me to, uh, you know, to meet with them, to schedule an appointment, and then I meet with them and uh, they list with me. That's, that's how I so, do that. So here's what I heard you say. You realize that you have something to overcome, and you realize that you're going to have to make more contacts and work harder to accomplish your goal in order to compensate for what some people perceive to be an accent. Well, it is an accent, but what you yeah. know, some people will not necessarily be. So you're you're realizing that you have to work extra hard, and you just accept that as part of your business model, and that's the way it goes. You don't let it defeat you, as so many other people do. That's what I'm yeah, hearing. That, yeah, that's correct. You know, uh, I'm not afraid of uh, you know being rejected. You know, because some people here, they think if you speak with an accent, you know, you might not understand English well enough. You know, you might don't um, get what they're saying on the phone. So, and I'm getting that a lot, okay? So, I'm just used to, that's the way it is. I just have to, you know, make additional phone calls or make an additional door knockings in order to achieve my goals. That's correct then. How did you overcome the fear of rejection? That, Michael, I'm telling you from a coach's perspective, if I could bottle that and sell it, <laughs> you know, I mean, that fear of rejection. What People live in fear. Americans who speak perfect English, who've grown up in the communities in which they're trying to sell real estate, who know most of the people they're trying to call if they're their centers of influence or past clients, they have this huge fear of rejection, and you don't have that. Or at least if you did, you don't let it stand in your way. How did you overcome that fear? Well, actually, um, the way to do that is, you know, you have to do things, you know, more, you know, things that you are afraid of, and then you start being afraid of uh, doing these things. So I was initially a couple of years ago, I was afraid of doing door knockings, you know, when I started, uh, you know, door knocking. So I was doing more and more and more. Right now, it comes naturally, you know, and it's, I'm not that much stressed because I did, you know, probably thousands of door knocks within the last couple of years. Um, and I, you know, I'm more relaxed because I do it a, a lot and I do it on a weekly basis, you know, same thing with making phone calls, you know, so uh, I'm not that stressed out because I do it a lot, you know, the, the more I, you know, things I do that I'm I also, or I am afraid of, you know, the, the, the easier it becomes. That's, that's what I, uh, how I see it, you know. So the bottom line is basically is you're not letting something, you're, you're focusing on, what I'm hearing you say is you're focusing on your goal. You have specifically weekly, monthly, and annual goals. You're focusing right. on those, and you're 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 realizing and acknowledging the fact that there's going to be obstacles to accomplishing those goals. And the over way, you're, only way you're going to overcome those obstacles is just literally jumping in the deep end and swimming as hard as you can, and eventually it becomes easier. Did I it, it, did I hear you correctly? Yeah, that's 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 very correct because you know the moment you get the listing, you know, you start doing new things, you know, like uh, experimenting, trying new scripts, trying new approaches, you know, uh, different ways to talk to people on the phone or or while you door knock, you know, and you see that you that you're gonna get that listing, you know, so you list that property, you sell it, and you know, a couple of months later, you have a very big check, you know. And you see it's really working out. So, you know, it, it keeps you motivating. You know, the more successful you become, the more motivated you are. That's, that's how I see it. Yeah, well, isn't that it? I mean, success breeds success. The more the, it, it becomes easier, and you're constantly getting that reinforced. So if, you're, if you have a fear, listeners, of doing anything in the business, a lot of you have fear of working with sellers. A lot of you have fear of prospecting, content, asking for all these lists of, you know, fears that agents have. The way to overcome it is to just do it. Don't think about it. Don't analyze it. Don't you can never just do it. Just if you if you fumble, who cares? I mean, if you if you make a mistake, that's okay. 
is the more times you do it, the more essentially you're going to overcome that fear. You will literally forget the fact that you ever felt that fear. And it, it, it can take two months. It could take two weeks. It just depends. I mean, <laughs> Michael, you're uh, – your activity, your your physical activity is karate, right? I mean, you're you're involved in karate with your son, correct? That's that's correct. Karate Shotokan. Yep. Right. And do you do bouts? Have you ever done a, a some sort of bout for a a a, a belt or anything of that nature? Um, I don't really get uh, competition. Competition. Um, no, I didn't do any competition uh, yet. You know, we did uh, you know kumite sparring. Uh, but no competition. Uh, you know, I don't think that I'm really into um, competing in that field. Uh, I like to challenge myself with uh, with learning new things. And uh, me and my son, we have been practicing karate for over five years. My son, he's seven, and he will be probably competing uh, this summertime. We go to International Shotokan Karate uh, Camp again uh, in Pennsylvania uh, this year. So I think he's going to start competing uh, for myself, I don't think it's worth it because, you know, if I get injured, you know, uh, I cannot work. So, you know, this is just for me and for being able to self-defense myself, if necessary. Makes perfect sense. So, so Michael, what is your definition of success? What is your what is your definition of success, and are, do you see yourself as successful? Um, yes, definitely. I think, I think you know, um, I'm getting there. You know, uh, I cannot just say that, oh, I'm very successful and I'm going to stop working and, you know, I don't have to work anymore. Um, really being successful, it means that, you know, I don't have to work for money, but my money is working for me. Okay? That's my definition. Where did you hear that? <laughs> I guess from you. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, you know what? And I, you know who I heard it from? It's uh, Bill Cosby. Oh, Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, he's the one. He's the one that originally said that. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. I mean, Michael said it. So say that one more time. Okay. Um, being successful means that uh, you don't have to work for money, but your money is working for you. How close are you to being able to live off the effort your money is making for you? In other words, living off investments and passive income. What is? Where do you? When do you foresee that happening? Uh, within the next three years. How are you going to do it? Well, my goal is to, uh, every year, for starting this year, to buy two rental properties. That's my goal. At least two rental properties. That's and it, basically it. Yeah. it. And, you know, and so, Michael, when, when you're building your real estate business and you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars per year, right, how yep. important is it to you that you save money? On a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the most important, savings, actual taking money aside, setting money aside, how, how important is that to you? 11. <laughs> there you go. So, so here's an interesting concept, which I know you embrace, but I'm going to ask you this question. What is your product in your business? What do you? What is your product? Well, selling properties, real estate. Selling properties, real estate, and leads to profit, right? That's correct. Yep. Yeah. So the profit, guys, and everyone listening, this is a different concept. Well, it's not. An, it's actually a very old concept. It's a very traditional concept. But it's something that all of us need to embrace because it really does kind of like clear the air about what should be focus, what should your focus be, in your real estate practice and small business owners. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Your prof, your product ultimately is profit. That is why you're in the business. If you're making, you know, it doesn't matter what you're making. You can be making pies, or you could be making shoes, or houses, or uh, airplanes. Your product ultimately is profit, and in our industry for some reason we've gotten so sidetracked now when you talk to an agent you ask them that question you know they're confused they don't realize that they are in business to make a profit they're in business to do exactly what michael's doing which is earn a lot of money save a lot of money invest a lot of money and then be financially free and the only way you can do that is if you really are profit minded so michael Let's get down to some of the meat and potatoes of basically how you decide how much you can save, if that's an okay topic for you. I know it isn't on our list of questions. But how do you yeah, actually mechanically good. save money? How, how, does, how, how do you save money? How, do you, how does that work for you? Tell us how you do it. Well, I pay myself first. So every check I get, you know, I transfer from my checking account to another account, my savings account. Okay, And I'm trying, you know, working very hard not to be, 
you know, uh, tempted to use that money from my saving uh, saving account. Okay, so that that's how I do it. I just transfer my money to another account. That's simple, right? And what percent yeah. do you what percent off every check do you pay yourself? So Michael, again, guys, what he's doing is it, it's a very basic, simple, beautiful concept. Is before he pays any other bills, before he pays and even his taxes, he is taking a certain percent off the top, it, be it a dollar or be it a hundred thousand dollars, and he's setting that money aside into a savings account. So what percent are you focused on saving off every dollar you earn? Well, actually, I would say at least thirty-five percent. It didn't start out that high, though, right? I mean, originally when you started on the savings plan, when you and I originally started speaking, it wasn't 35%. You worked up to be that high of a percent, correct? That's correct, yes. That's very correct. Right. Okay, good. So, I, you know, this is an interesting question. I think we already know the answer, but do you consider yourself to be a highly motivated person? Yes, definitely. Definitely I am. Yeah, you definitely are. So do you always feel that way? What happens when you're not feeling motivation? How do you get yourself back on track? Uh, well, actually, you know, that's human nature. You don't feel like working, you know, uh, every day. And sometimes, you know, um, you really want to do something else. But uh, the, the way I motivate myself, you know, I reward myself. Okay, so uh, let's say I don't feel like working this particular day. I remind myself that I want to take my family on vacations, you know, two, three months down the road. I have to prepare for vacations, you know, and I'm um, just counting down dates to my, you know, family vacation time. And, uh, and I know that these days, you know, I have to work hard to be able to go on vacations and spend time with my family and um, travel. So... That's, that's what I do. Um, in other days, you know, if I'm really exhausted, you know, sometimes our job, you know, is very stressful, especially if you deal with the banks. Um, I just uh, go and exercise, you know, a bit longer, uh, take yoga class and uh, relax a little bit and come back and uh, spend another hour um, on the phone making, uh, making contacts. So that's, that's how I motivate myself by, you know, by rewarding myself and my family and, uh, that's, that's how I do it. And, you know, I love what you said. You you have big things that you're looking forward to, and you also have small things that you're looking forward to. And, guys, that really is a key for long-term motivation. You have to reward yourself along the way. And, you know, like I said, it could be big things. Michael's going to be going taking his family to Europe in the summer or whatever. And, he, and then the other small things is maybe he wants to take his wife out to a nice dinner this weekend or, you know, whatever it is. So the, the point of it is, is, guys, if you're ever having a motivation issue, it chances are it's just frankly because you're not looking forward to something. We are hardwired as human beings to always be looking forward to something, to be working towards something. So if you're lacking motivation, if you're lacking just really the gumption to get started or maybe even the gumption to pick up the phone and call a center of influence or past client, set up a little game for yourself. And it could just be like maybe it's not a financial goal. Maybe it's just a personal time goal. Maybe you're going to say, well, you know what? If I accomplish what I'm going to accomplish in the first three days, Monday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday of this week, I'm going to take Thursday and Friday completely off. Oh, and I'm also going to take the weekend off. You can do that. Play a game with yourself. Get yourself motivated. It really does work. And, again, if you go and study any successful athlete, business person, doesn't matter what, they all have motivated themselves and keep themselves motivated that way. True internal motivation and drive, guys, comes from the forming of habits, from having, you know, Michael, you've accomplished a lot of goals in your life. You've, you're a goal-setting and goal-accomplishing machine, and that breeds more goal-setting and more goal-accomplishing, almost like it comes naturally because it has – Forming big goals and, and accomplishing them has become a habit for you, hasn't it? Yes, definitely it has. You know, it, you know, it's like um, you know, flying on autopilot. You know, and you know, sometimes I am even surprised that you know, at this point uh, of my life, uh, in my life, you know, I'm being able to do these things, you know, automatically, um, working hard, you know, days every day, whether I like it or not. You know, I know sometimes it's boring. You know, it's uh, doing you know all these tasks. You know, it's it's boring. You know, uh, but you know, that's that's how that's how we make money in the United States. You know, doing more things. You know, at the at the highest level, and uh, that's that's the way it's done. You know, whether you like it or not. Is that's right? Is life balance a concern of yours, or is it a myth? 
Uh, well, I think it's a myth, you know, uh, especially in that type of business that I am uh, in, you know, doing a lot of mostly short sales, um, you know, you know, there is, there is really no balance, you know. Um, and before I'm before I'm ready to go on vacation, let's say one week before, sometimes I have to work 10, 14 hours, you know, every day to be able to have another week off. Um, you know, these corporations they have deadlines. You know, you have to do everything on time. If you don't accomplish your, you know, online tasks, you know, if it's not done, these banks they're just gonna close your file, and you know, your four months of work is gone, and you have to start it all over again. So, so sometimes it's tough, especially you know. The moment that I submit a lot of short sales on on Equator or start, you know, working on that with other banks uh, by faxing, it's it's a lot of work and it's a lot of tasks. And uh, you know, of course, you know, I work 10, 14 hours some days, and uh, you know, and I have time for nothing else really. You know, so there is no balance. Well, it's because at this point in your life, you're focusing on your financial goals, right? And once That's you accomplish right. those, and once you're at the place where your money's working for you, maybe then you can start focusing on some of the other things. I think that's probably a fair statement. So I agree. Uh, another fun question. If you could have lunch with one person, someone who's alive someone or someone who's passed, who would that be and why, and what questions would you ask them? Well, I would love to talk to uh, Neil Armstrong, first man on the moon, Unfortunately, he passed away last year, okay? Um, and uh, I would ask him what it takes for one to become a space traveler like him and how he was dealing with all this stress that he was involved in, you know? So that's, that's what I would do. Um, Neil Armstrong, he confessed one time that he gave Apollo 11 a 90% chance of returning home safely, but just a 50% chance of landing on the moon successfully. And he says that uh, we weren't there to meditate. We were there to get things done. And that's what I loved about this guy. What is, I, I understand what you're saying, and I think that's an awesome point. Elaborate on that a little bit, if you don't mind. Well, actually, you know, for me to achieve my goals, you know, like a couple of years when I started in real estate, you know, um, really bec become a millionaire, become, you know, financially independent. It was kind of like, you know, for this guy landing on the moon, you know. So he accomplished his goal, you know, he was the first man to be there, okay. So for me, you know, achieve my goals is kind of landing on the moon, okay. So if you were mm -hmm. to land on the moon, you have to ask yourself a question, whether you're trying to do everything on your own or you're going to ask somebody who was there before you. Okay, the way I see, you know, myself becoming successful, um, I need to be educated and uh, I need to take advice from people who achieved that goal before me. Okay, so that's why I think, you know, that Neil Armstrong, you know, we have, we, we would have a lot of, a lot in common. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right. Now I understand. You're both sort of like, uh, in, in a strange way, he was landing on the moon as the first, and completely no one had ever been there before. And and you had you came to the United States without any family contacts. You kind of came. To, I think you were married at the time, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So you and your wife immigrated here, and, and you essentially landed on the moon. And you know, who knew what was going to happen on that first step? And and I love what you said about you know essentially. Uh, putting one step in front of the other and focusing on what your goals are. I think it's very inspirational. So, uh, w you know, as a top producing agent, as someone who's becoming certainly one of the nation's leading realtors, Michael, what, what is one of the hardest aspects of, your, of what you do? What is something that maybe people don't understand about being somebody at your level? Well, um, I would say that it's lonely on the top, you know, not that many agents become, become very successful. Um, you know, so, you know, usually you don't have a chance to, to talk to somebody who's that successful selling a lot of properties because in my marketplace, you know, agents, uh, they will not share their information. They, you know, we are kind of like competing with, uh, with each other. So uh, I always believe in education and uh, I don't really think that, you know, it can, you know, success comes by luck, or, you know, or just coincidence. Um, it's all about, you know, investing in yourself, you know, learning new skills. And uh, a lot of agents, they think that, oh, you know, this guy is successful because, you know, he has connections or he's just lucky, he's just pure luck. 
you know, but in reality, it's all hard working and uh, doing things, you know, uh, at the highest led, led level, level, whether you like it or not. And that's 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 how I see that. So it's what you're saying is doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do uh, when you don't want to do it at the highest level. I mean, that really is what it takes to be successful, isn't it? Yes, yes, it is. Yep. So, what has coaching meant to you? What is how how what has that meant to you in your business? Well, to be very honest, uh, coaching is not easy and not for everybody. Okay, um, and I think in reality we don't have a chance to talk directly to people being very successful, uh, financially independent, independent on a weekly basis, and getting their advice. You know, coaching uh, has completely changed uh, the way I think, the way I act, the way I work. Uh, do business and uh, and live my life, you know. So uh, it means a lot to me, and uh, it was the smartest des- decision that I had made since getting involved in real estate. And uh, but there is a price you have to pay, and the price is that you need to listen to your coach. If you don't, it's just a waste of your money and your time. And your coach's time, more importantly. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> well, you know, I like what you said because it's true. Coaching isn't for everybody. So, I mean, if someone's listening right now and they're trying to decide whether or not they should reach out to us and talk to us about being their one-on-one coach, you know, who would you say? Who would you suggest that to? What, what would, how would someone actually pre-qualify themselves as to whether or not they'd be a good coaching candidate, especially a one-on-one coaching candidate? What would you suggest? Well, that's 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 a good question. Uh, really, you know, if somebody is listening to this interview right now, and um, you know, thinking, oh, you know, this guy came from Europe, you know, he could be selling, you know, in his marketplace and uh, being successful in his marketplace, and he speaks with heavy accent, you know, so why why not me, right? So it's all about you know thinking big, you know, having big dreams. Um, and, but there is a shortcut. There is a shortcut in uh, coaching. I would say that coaching is that, that short, shortcut. If I knew about HRU seven years ago, I would sign up seven years ago for the coaching. You know, um, It wasn't always easy. It takes a couple of months to change the way you do business, the way you talk to clients, um, the way you behave. But uh, everybody who can actually take advice from somebody else okay, and apply that – without being afraid, okay, or scared, somebody who is willing to do things, you know, that they don't like, you know, but you can learn all these things, you know, the coach is there to help you, to polish your skills, you know, Uh, he's going to give you advice, try this, change that, try this technique, and then you can practice, and then you find out the way that it's really working out for you, and uh, you can really get advice, you know, from the best, you know, in this uh, industry and getting the best possible help. And you kind of like getting advice from team, and team is, you know, coaching top producer agents, top producers throughout the United States, all over, okay? And uh, if these people are very, very successful, you know, you can implement these techniques that made them that successful yourself and in your business. And that's why I am with team. Um, a part of his coaching for over two years. So why, and I appreciate that too, by the way, I very much appreciate the kind words you've said. I don't take them for granted. I do appreciate it. Um, it's my why do you think, and it's, it, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know the answer to this question. I don't imagine, I can't imagine what you're going to say either, but I'm interested from your perspective because you do have a dramatically different perspective than I'm sure everybody else listening to this call. Why are some people coachable, Michael? Why do some people take direction? Why do some people have a thirst for knowledge, whereas other people aren't? What's the difference? What makes you so special? Well, that's that's a very good question. And, um, you know, I think, you know, um, people in real estate, you know, they have big ego, okay? Uh, you, you, you really want it to be your own boss. You don't really want to listen to everybody else. You don't want to be working for any corporation. You want to set up your own time. Um, and, you know, to a certain point you can, but then you're going to be selling seven, ten units per year till the rest of your real estate career. If that's your point, then God bless. But if you really want to achieve your big dreams, you know, you really need to uh, 
take directions from people being on a higher, much higher level than you. Because the way these people think is completely different than, you know, I used to think, you know, when I started coaching a couple of years ago. Okay, so that's what I think. Big ego, you don't really want to listen to anybody else's advice. Um, then it's going to be really hard for you, especially, you know, if you um, are not willing to uh, do any type of coaching or if you are not really, you know, interested in uh, getting to the next level. Then you're going to be, you know, average real estate agent selling, you know, between five and seven units you know, on a yearly basis, and uh, that's the way it is. Have you ever, have you always thought big, Michael? I mean, you obviously think big. Have you always, you said your thinking has changed. I heard you say that. I'm sure other listeners right now are saying, what already meant by that. You're, you said your thinking has changed in the last two years. What does that mean? Well, the, you know, what I meant by that is uh, once you create new habits, you know, you are, you are different. Your brain works in a different way. You know, for me, um, you know, I don't really feel that I accomplished my day successfully if I didn't make enough phone calls, enough contacts, if I didn't really fight for that leasing for this client, you know. So I really have to be out there working, calling, door knocking, you know, working uh, in my business, you know, versus, you know, just picking up phone calls and waiting for somebody to, to call me. So it's all about, you know, being motivated, achieving your goals, and uh, trying to be there when you are needed, okay? And you have to be, uh, you know, very, very uh, concentrated on that. And uh, that, that's, the way, that's the way I think, you know? Well, that really is the bottom line. And, Michael, I, don't, I think you uh, don't give yourself enough credit for your uh, mastery of the English language. I assure you that it's better than all of our listeners' combined mastery of the Polish language. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I hope so. appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, Otherwise, my I, you know, I, I, yeah, yeah. Initially, I told I told him that uh, I can I can be a part of this interview only if he's gonna be uh, actually uh, doing the subtitles. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> not necessary. You are perfect. So, so listen, everyone. I I hope and, and, and Michael really did summarize the call well. So there's really not much more for me to say. But really, the bottom line here is is anyone anywhere, and I don't care what age you are. I don't care. It, it just doesn't matter. We have coaching clients uh, it, that are just of all different nationalities, all different, you know, it just doesn't even really matter. I, I can just go down to the list. We have people that are Native Americans. We have people that are uh, Asian. We have people that are, you know, you know, born and bred in Midwest like my wife. It just doesn't matter. The fact is that everybody has the same capacity to succeed. There are no – Everyone has the same tools if you're willing to look for them. And again, to Michael's point, that's what coaching is all about. But most importantly, you have to be willing to apply them. Um, you know, I don't want to make this an advertising for Harrisville State University coaching, but it really is worth repeating what he said. Don't request a free coaching call. Don't ask for a coaching period if you're not going to apply because you're just wasting your time and you're wasting your money. And if you are somebody who is res hesitant to take information from folks that are trying to help you, you've got to really challenge yourself and ask yourself, why? What is it that you're afraid of? Something is holding you back. And it's probably the same thing that's been holding you back your entire life. You know, Julie and I are re-releasing Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. We've rewritten it, and it's a real estate edition. And by the time this interview is live, you guys are going to be able to find it on Amazon and all the other major bookstores. And in his book, Napoleon Hill talks about the fact that a lot of people are stymied by good old-fashioned fear of success or fear of failure. Those were Mr. Hill's, um, in his opinion, in his, I think, correct opinion, those are the two things that hold most people back from accomplishing their goals. They have fear of failure, so they never try. And a minority of people have fear of success. In other words, what will happen if I actually win that listing or what happens if I actually accomplish the goal? You know, all those base fears, guys, as Michael just said correctly, are based in your ego, okay? And I know this is kind of a strange, well, what the heck is Tim talking about? These are the types of self-discovery, introspection things that happen along the path um, through a good coaching relationship. So, Michael, listen, and I mean this sincerely, I have, and I hope to for many years, love being your coach. Your 
your growth, your momentum, not just as a practitioner of real estate, but as a person and as a business person. And uh, it, it's it's ex, it's ex, exhilarating for me. It's exciting. It's it's. You're, I look forward to our call. I can't say that for for every call I ever have. But the fact is, is that you're somebody who I am so much looking forward to having a conversation with. You and I will be sitting in the Four Seasons someplace in, you know, in Austin, Texas or wherever, and you and I are going to be drinking champagne celebrating the fact that you've just essentially, you know, you now have a net worth in the low eight figures or whatever it is that your specific financial goal is. And I am sure that whatever you focus your mind on, you're going to accomplish. And, you know, I, I hope that we motivate and excite you and give you direction, but you also, your success motivates certainly us, and it motivates everyone listening. So I want to thank you on behalf of, uh, obviously, Julie, myself, and all the faculty and staff of being um, this month's Harris Real Estate University Superstar. So sincere thank you, Michael. It's, it's been my pleasure, and I'm looking forward to us drinking champagne, you know, two, three years down the road. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Okay, good. I like how, I like how you said two, three, opposed to five. I appreciate that. So, Michael, <laughs> one last time, if they can, if, to get hold of you to send you a referral, how do they do it? Okay, uh, the best way to reach me is uh, you can call me at 908-220-9385 or through email, nj, like New Jersey, short sale at yahoo.com, nj, short sale at yahoo.com. Thank you. Perfect. So everyone listening, thank you for joining us for this uh, month's Harris Real Estate University Superstar interview. Uh, if you need to get hold of Michael, you have his contact information. If you'd like a free coaching call, click that button there on the screen, and you will talk with maybe Julie or myself or one of our Harris Real Estate University coaches about how we might be able to work with you to move your business forward. So on behalf of Julie, myself, and all the faculty and staff here at Harris Real Estate University, thank you for joining us for this month's Harris Real Estate University Superstar interview. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. That was great. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much. I'm glad you liked that. I, I like how I, – I, by the way, I like what you said about, uh, you know, the fact – you are holding yourself back, I have a feeling, you know, which is fine. But the reality of it is is that uh, so many Americans, they have no idea how good we have it, you know. It, 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 and they yep. really do need to travel. If people could travel to Europe, if people could even go to a beautiful country like, you know, France and go to Paris and see how – taxed people are, you know, emotionally oh, yeah. and financially, yep. you know, it's incredible. So, listen, man, you're I doing great. You're yeah, rocking 75%, it. So. 75% right now. In yeah, I know. Canada, I, ha I have two coaching clients in Canada, and these guys uh -huh. really all in pay 50%, and, they're, and the wow. tax brackets are lower. Yeah, 50% of your money going to the government. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, yes, it is. Definitely. Well, listen, I'll, I'll talk to you on this week's coaching call. Have a great week, man. Yeah, talk to you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.